I like yeah, that his he, bedroom, he, he's such a teenager, his mattress is on the floor? It's like, you're the crown prince, what are you doing? <laughs> and he literally, he literally is a wanker. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry, I'm waiting on to say that. Um, yeah, let's rewrite the scene. He says, no, don't cut up in my wife, and then Lena's like, well, I'm dying anyway. And then he hugs his daughters, and they look out, and they cry together. It'll be great. <laughs> and welcome back. Two Vassals of Kingsgrave for Dragoncast, episode six of HBO's series House of the Dragon. Uh, episode called The Princess and the Queen. We've dropped the name of the title, right? Or, well, of the original story, anyway. Uh, my name is Adam. I'm also known as Drowned Snow on the interwebs and various things. And uh, the Discord, just come check it out. And I will say, let's see, oh, we will be spoiling... This episode and potentially anything from Game of Thrones or uh, anything from George R. R. Martin or spoiler chapters, just sort of anything. Uh, it's all fair game. You never know. Um, and maybe like other shit. Like, I don't know, Doctor Who probably. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm joined today by several vassals and we're going to get to meet them right now. Uh, first, we have Bing. Bing, what did you think? Uh, yeah. Um, I think I'll give it like a. Hmm. Somewhere between 3.75 and like a 4, I guess. Um, it's... I mean, the, the, the time... We have a huge time jump. Um, and I feel like they... This feels like another first episode. And I feel like they tried to cram... Maybe cram a bit too many things into this episode. Um, I think there, some of the... Some, some of what they tried to... Lay there... Let's uh, try to establish like the... the you know, very much uh, ant uh, antag antagonism between Alicent and uh, Rhaenyra. That was done very well. Uh, but other stuff, like for example, all the all the uh, Lena Damon scenes were a bit too rushed to me. Um, I don't know what to interpret about uh, the scene with Lena's death um, regarding whatever Damon's input in that is. Maybe the point is is that he had no input, um, but um, yeah, I feel like that the some characters were. I also think like Harwin Strong only got like a few lines, but I guess that guy wasn't really much of a useful talker, anyways. Um, so yeah, I feel like a few there some some things got rushed a bit, but it is I guess it is what it is. We have to restart. I, I I think that's what I would have said too. Is it feels like this is like an episode one again, almost like we you know if there was like too many series and we're under a new season or something, um, you know we'll see how that works out. How everybody feels about that. Um, what do you think, Katie? I'll give it a five out of five. Money was on the screen, guys. Um, I don't have. My, I'm going to be repeating myself every single week. I thought this episode was very purposely paced. I thought even though we only have one episode with Harwin as his in his daddy mode and Lena in her mommy mode, it it felt like those characters were given the right amount of space they needed to make an emotional connection with other characters. And I thought the actresses, uh, or rather uh, everybody in the cast who is new, I thought just knocked it out of the part. I love what they've done with the kids and their personalities uh, that we didn't really get in Fire and Blood and how it's just everything with Aegon and Helena and the little kids. I think it's great. I was very impressed with this episode and it was a joy to watch. Awesome. Enthusiasm. That's great. Yeah, I think that uh, developing the kids, especially kind of at this younger age before we get another skip, is going to be good. I think they were trying to invoke a little of like the Winterfell training in that first scene there, uh, which we'll talk about. Uh, and what about you, Stephanie? What do you think? Hi. Uh, so I think I'll give it a 3.5. So this episode had a lot to do of just like doing the time jump, introducing the second generation of characters, and 
where updating us on where things stand and introducing or you know giving breakbones and Lena and Lenor you know good screen time before they're all killed off and the uh, but you know I will take a point five off or so like I would have given it a four otherwise but the uh you know just like stuff about like Allison's motivations that we've been talking about in the discord it's uh you know like it makes the character less interesting for me which is my main issue so yeah yeah which, there was quite a quite a drastic change uh in her characterization I guess between the between the last episode and this episode but it's also been 10 years so no, yeah. I buy that for like ten years, given the how last episode played out, she's just been stewing in her paranoia, but it's just like it's it's more of or you know, like whether you want to call it for like the point five for this episode or like the point five for like retroactively for the last episode of going jumping immediately to the conclusion of she'll kill my kids without a second thought. Right, right. You know, we can talk about this later, but like or not yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean she went from like last episode uh, talking to her father, which was 10 years ago, you know, him being like, he'll kill the kids, and her saying, well, no, obviously, like, no, and then, I guess, kind of being like, maybe they are in danger, to, like, shaking her children, like, you're gonna die! <laughs> um, no, 10 know, years I mean, of stewing in the paranoia will do that to you. Yeah, yeah, it's just... It's actually it's, a logical conclusion, that, it's just, so. like, it's... It is about, like, for me, Ray, it is just, like, about the, like, it, it's more about how last episode was structured, about, like, jumping to, she'll yeah. kill my kids without a second thought, just because she's sleeping around. You know, like, yeah, yes, yeah. my dad was fired over this, but, like, you know, we can get into it later. Yeah, we talked about it, I mean, no, I, I agree, I, and I, I think I agree with you mostly, I, I didn't feel that, like, the danger is really there, and some other people thought just inherently it's dangerous, so. Yeah, and, you know, again, maybe... This came up in the forum too, but like maybe, you know, maybe I'm just like the person, since I'm the person who didn't watch Game of Thrones when, once it went off book, you know, maybe I'm just like more of like a show hater for that reason. And this is just. I, mean, like, I do. I, I, that might be it. I've kind of noticed that trend of like, and listening to Wolfcast and, and talking with people in the forums, that some people I feel like that, that bailed on Game of Thrones earlier. Like are still a lot more critical of this of kind of the stuff that I feel like I'm more forgiving on because I'm like oh they're doing it so much better, um, and that's okay. You know I have oh, no, other yeah, TV yeah. shows where I just go just go just where I just roll with it and it's okay. Right. I don't think I don't think anyone's wrong. It's just you know it's, we like what we like. Let's move on to uh, Juicio Ben. What what do you think? Well, I think I'll probably give it uh, a four. Um. To mirror all of you, uh, in that it, this is very much a like feels like an episode one, um, or like a mid season comeback, uh, or uh, like what were those mid season finales and then like restarts? Type yeah, of like thing. At, you know when they have like the fall Christmas break or something, or you know. yeah, yeah, like yeah. in Walking Dead, like back in the day, I remember that being a thing. Right. Um, it it certainly feels like that. Uh. uh I really enjoyed a lot of the uh, Rhaenyra stuff, but at the same time, it does feel like it has come at the cost of Alicent being a likable character. Um, that being said, I think what we lack right now is why she feels this way exactly. Because again, like um, about Alicent's paranoia. Yeah, Alicent's paranoia. Um, it it definitely comes off as kind of out there for a person that like was lied to, um, and that being ten years ago. But I guess it it like can be explained with her being stuck in that like war mode for so long, and then like really taking to heart her father's message of Rainier will kill your children. Um, Oh, uh, our interaction to the kids was good, I think. Uh, all of them came off well. Uh, not good, but well. <laughs> they just seemed like little brats. Um, but, hey, that's your kids. Um, otherwise, I really enjoyed this episode. Lenor kind of felt like an asshole halfway through this episode. 
Um, but I get it at the same time. Um, I like that they try to work with each other at the in the end. Like he accepts it, and she still is like, "Oh, bring Carl." Um, but yeah, uh, good episode. All right, and uh, Matt, Matt, what do you think? Lou, um, you know, I'm, I'm in Katie's boat. I, I love this show, and for personal reasons, <laughs> I love it more than the original. Um, I don't really have a rating for this episode, just because, you know, I, while I love uh, Olivia and, and Emma coming on here, uh, my, my judgment is still, like, askew, just because, even though I knew it was coming, it, it fucking sucks to, like, see... Like, Lena and Harwin, and, you know, Lena's gonna probably go out next episode. Um, you know, these were... It's it's different when it's, you know, kind of... Um, when you're at a distance with it in the book, and you don't really... You don't really see them as, like, full, complete characters. Um, and, you know, right. there wasn't... There wasn't enough time. You know, I feel like we didn't get enough time with them in this show either. Like, I definitely... Man, if they could afford it, like... I would have made this this season twelve episodes, um, but but these characters were still like fascinating and intriguing for them to me, and it and it it kind of feels like you know they're stuck. It's like well they you know they died in the story, so they got to die here, um, and so yeah, I just I just wish we had, you know, I almost wish for wish for changes in that matter, even though I I know that's that's not going to happen, um, but but even so, like it'll. This stuff will will come together here as as the two sides coalesce and and everyone who main, who remains alive, um, I th- I think is just fascinating, um, you know obviously with with Rhaenyra and Allison being the main two, Laris came in fucking hot this episode that was awesome, hmm. um, and and <laughs> and the most <laughs> fascinating thing is. Uh, is fucking Helena, where I literally said, "Oh shit," and paused the uh, the episode when uh, <laughs> when she said he'll have to close an eye, um, bringing in right? like a, a yeah, bringing in like a dreamer in here too. I think is is fascinating, uh, especially combining that with blood and cheese. Um, I'm oh. really excited. I'm really you excited thought, for that. You thought she was a dreamer and not just a a bug freak? Yeah, because they. Because Allison mentions like that, Eamon, um, you know, hasn't had a dragon yet. When they were teasing him about it, and Helena chimes in, he'll have to close an eye. I thought she was like, talking about the millipede. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I, 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 day. <laughs> she was like dreamily looking off at it, and I was like, "Wait, what did she just say?" Yeah, no. Yeah, no exactly. I, like, I was freaked out by that. I was like, "Oh my god, a dreamer!" And, and they just casually just walk by it, like no one was like, <laughs> no one calls it out. Um, you know. Wow, that's that's better than what I thought. I was like, oh, she's an an entomologist in the in training. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I so say yeah, probably the like the you know while it's it doesn't um, change my my rating of the show. That the thing that grates on me the most, and I'm about to spoil shit for these these idiots that listen to this episode, <laughs> thinking we're not spoiling shit. But man, it fucking it fucking galls that <laughs> Vagar goes. From that, like wonderful human being of Lena to the little shit that's, uh, Aemon, that's Aemon, and it t- it's gonna take like a full two seasons before Damon fucking takes him out on that shit. Like, God, that sucks. Right? <laughs> yeah. But just yeah. think, it'll be so fucking great when it when it happens. I know, I know. Like, that's. I mean, it's, yeah. it's gonna rival. Like, I mean, though. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm always going to be more on like Rhaenyra's side here with with the way um, Alicent is, but you know, I say, I still love Olivia Cook a lot. Is um, she so. something worth celebrating? Not entirely, but you know, well, hey, I want to I mean, see you know. look, I want to see the actress's performance. There we go. Okay. Okay. I mean, it, yeah, I think I think it kind of makes or breaks the like. Are we going to go hardcore? Although, saying that, they've already done something this season that made me think, well, okay. It feels like they have... Um, no, they want the... something on the scale of Bran out the window, if even if they have to wait an extra season for it. You know? Oh, yeah. I agree. I'm saying, for me, it feels like we need blood and cheese. Not because it's good, obviously. 
the the blood and cheese thing for me is like we need it because it it makes the blacks like it makes them look horrible like extremely. oh yeah absolutely and i think it it brings a complexity to the situation that feels really horrible that being said a bad thing like do I'm not condemn not- yeah, I'm not going to be happy. Yeah, I, d- I don't it. condone this child assassination. <laughs> um, so, I know you don't like numbers, Matt. Um, but the people want their numbers. So, I'll go over a few numbers. So, last week's episode um, was probably the highest rated, just kind of looking around the internet. And our kind of like unofficial poll up on the YouTube as well. It had, let's see, a 51% uh, gave it five lemon cakes. So that's that's the uh, the highest spread we've had of five lemon cakes and uh, for many of the episodes. And I will also say that uh, the first poll I put up was like whether people supported the greens or the blacks, and that was like you know seventy five twenty five about is what that ended up, which is about what I expected. But I also put up a poll to see kind of who felt like more engaged, like which um, if Rhaenyra or Allison came off better you know, from the first half of the season. And that was like 65-35, so, you know. Okay, can I just say something right here, since I guess I'm this cast's resident Allison hater or something, <laughs> by default? You know, like, I, the reason I was so, like, you know, why I'm so critical of the last episode is because I was interested in where that was going and for them to make, her to just like make a paranoid break into she'll kill my kids just made me lose interest. Yeah, they invested a lot into into young Allison and trying to make her likable and trying to make her seem innocent. I don't agree with it that it's a paranoid break with reality. I just think it's the reality of the world to live in, which is that her this person that she doesn't trust anymore is going to have power over her children who are a direct threat to her claim and therefore she's right to have you know, to be forming contingencies or to want to shore up her her support and her flank against that. It's, like, I, I actually find her more interesting now as a character than when she was the sweet, doe-eyed innocent. I think the way that she is, especially at the end where she's kind of grappling with, the, like, the magnitude of <laughs> the murders she has played a part in, like, there's a franticness about her, there's a... a a fierceness about her. She's like she kind of like reminds me of like a nascent Cersei, with like without the the coldness. Like I don't know, there's more energy to her than there was before. And it's she's not as likable, but I find her more interesting in her motivations, I guess. She's more mm-hmm. alive to me than she was when she was a child. The more I talk, I don't know, the more I seem like a green sympathizer, even though I'm not on either side. Uh-huh. I feel like Allison was not paranoid at all. I feel everything she said was mostly mostly made sense perfectly. Rhaenyra well murdered her kids. Well, I don't think she believed that though. I mean, she she didn't think Rhaenyra would murder her kids. That's the point. Is she wasn't really paranoid now? Like, yeah. Now, now we're like ten ten years later. It's a self fulfilling prophecy. Absolutely, because, yes, of, of, because of Otto. I mean, yeah, it is absolutely. But it is, that that's not, that's that doesn't make it any less true. <laughs> and she, her entire life is like, she believes that she did the right, she did everything she was supposed to, and she's still not happy. Like, yeah. and right, meanwhile, Rhaenyra gets to like have this incredibly visible affair and fuck whoever she wants and birth bastards, and nobody apparently cares about it. And <laughs> I can feel her frustration in that. She's like, it's not fair. So I pissed. had to marry this old king and birth out like these pure Targaryens, and she just gets to do whatever she wants. <laughs> she has like no hair left. The king. Uh, and that's a good segue, actually. Uh, why don't we start talking about this first scene? Because uh, it kind of plays right into that. Uh, so the, the episode opens up with Rhaenyra giving birth like a boss, and uh, as soon as that baby's out, Allison is all like, let me see the baby. And uh, we get a scene with her refusing to give the baby off, walking up to the chambers, and like everyone in court is just around, I guess because they know the baby's coming, so like they all just hang out. I guess that makes sense. Um, was it Lord Caswell, I think, they ran into Caswell, on the way up? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and L- Lainor's being kind of the uh, the uh, supportive husband here. He's been doing a great job. 
um, playing his role and all that. And seems, I mean, he's, I think he legitimately cares. That, um, the whole like, I, I was a little confused with the whole like, I thought we were over this. Like, she wants to see the babies right away to like check and make sure they look like Lenor. I mean, the babies always look weird like immediately when they come out anyway, and whatever. Anyway, um, yeah. They, uh, I think it's they, a power they, play more than anything by Alice. Yeah, yeah. Like, which like I'm going to take the baby away before really, you get to like have that time. Yeah, yeah, which comes off really bad in my opinion for her. Like, really gross. Right, because she gets there, uh, she gets there. She's oh well, you should have been in, in bed. What are you doing? Like, you're going to take the kid away from its mother like right away. Uh, I thought she was just find out proving her point again because she's like, I know what you know, which is that this yeah. child is not legitimate. And it's just a very cruel way to emphasize that point, which is like, show me the child so I can look in your eyes and smile at you. I want just... to see the baby. Um... I mean, it's also, <laughs> it does also feel like a power play because she can just force it as the queen. Like The cruelty is the point. Yeah. yeah. You have to and, come and, and... It is kind of weird. I mean, she's the heir. Uh, let's like, clarify, you know, it help. is Rhaenyra's pride that, you know, like, Rhaenyra... It is Rhaenyra's pride that drives her to, like, just, oh, like, she, do yeah, the yes. walk herself. Yes. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, she's, not, she's not being forced to come herself. The baby is being taken from her to but, be But what if she says Alice. no? What if she says she can come to me or the baby ain't leaving? What are they going to do? Who's going to do it? Right? I mean, presumably a maid, but yeah. Well, look, I wouldn't want my newborn, you know, like, you know, like, giving, or, you know, like, being presented to my stepmother who hates my ass without my supervision, you know? Yeah. Right. But, but I think she could have just said no. And, like, right, just but said, it we're, is her we're staying in bed. But she wouldn't know. take that well. It, like, Viserys wants peace, so she has to play along. If she says no... You know, like you know, like Alice yeah, is going to. More we've already create we've more strife. Already, you know, like we've already had can... an example of her using her power, obviously in a way less, um, like nasty way when she sends away the the minstrel, right? In episode three, and he obeys right. her over the air, right? Right. So to me, it's just her using her power again. But again, here you would have to have someone commanded to take the baby, who's who is ro royalty, from the mother by force, and they're like, "Well, we can't do that." Like, I feel like no one could actually do it. Um, oh, by order of the queen, point. yeah, you. They can. No, but even by order of the queen, if Renera's like, "Fuck off!" Like, <laughs> you're not touching this baby. No one's going to put hands on them, right? Because you get killed for that. I think um, the point is that Renera could say no, but she's. She's, she's she switched right. places with Alicent, where Alicent before was the placating one, and now Rhaenyra is the one who is trying to, uh, like, avoid conflict yeah. throughout the whole episode. And also, you could see it as a power play to be like, you want me to come up there? Fine. I'll drag my bleeding body up the stairs and show you the baby. Like, it's gonna <laughs> suck for me, but trail, if you make a your trail point, of blood. I'll make my point. Yeah. No, I think that's my point, is that she did not have to do this. No, she, even though like no, the it's queen her being petty, her, just right she, back. Yeah, yeah. And we find out that they named the kid Joffrey, which uh, well, that's not a names Targaryen the kid name. Joffrey, right? Well, right off yeah. the bat, it's like oh, and then and then Alicent just is like full, full, uh, full Alicent mode here. Uh, you know, maybe if you keep trying, you'll have one that looks like you. Um, and then you know, from the books, yeah, they've yeah. got yeah, they've got eggs for the baby. And uh, her kids don't have enough eggs, and then you know we get we get some strong some strong action. Um, yeah. yeah, we meet the kids. I think that's the first thing we get with the kids, isn't it? When they meet, um, yeah, they right structure they, it really they well the because that's like right. It's just like it's just opening on the baby's birth, and you know, left the baby upstairs, and then like. Like, you know, like, Allison gives the keep trying line, and then we open, or, you know, we cut to the strong boys, and it's just like, oh, this is, this is a pattern for Rhaenyra. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and the baby is our, uh, it's kind of our through line to everyone in the scene. We kind of touch on with everyone, you know. We get to see Grandpa Viserys, and we get to see Queen Allison, and oh, we, you know, oh, strong, okay, what's, been, what's going on? Oh, that's what's been going on. Like, it's just, yeah, I mean, it, all of that is, you know, what, five, ten minutes that you know, this first sequence, and they kind of touch with everybody at King's Landing pretty efficiently. Viserys looks rough. 
Yeah, he's lost an arm. He's armless. It's, uh, he looks like some sort of like some sort of weird hermit. And that's like, but or some sort of crown. Yeah, he looks like he should abdicate. But... It looks like yeah, he's just like you know, just existing in his chamber with his Lego set, and you know, like it's... you know, like perching or you know, like sitting on like the battle mitts above the yard to watch people train, and then the council chamber. And that's it. That's his life. Clearly, see what he has been doing the past ten years, though. That Lego set of Valeria is yeah, like pretty nice. His Lego pretty city nice. is pretty cool. What do you think is yeah. going to happen to the Lego city after he dies? Is Allison just going to like throw it <laughs> off the balcony? I feel like she's going to destroy it. I feel like that's what's going to happen. I'm not even. Oh, do you think? I mean, do you think they'll show us that where she, like, her and Kristen Cole are just like, "Fuck this shit." <laughs> I feel like it'll be her thing. To break It'd be it. It'll, it'll be like a cathartic moment of her being like, you know, I'm done with this marriage. You know, or you know, yeah, it'd be very painful for her and Kristen Cole to bang on it. So I think it's she should. It, it would just be like smashed. I think it's more yeah, likely to see her grab dragons. that same dragon, the one that she had remade for him, and then like break mm. it or something. And then like yeah. that's the that's the scene we get with it, and then it'll be gone from her chambers like forever you know her servants got rid of it at, afterwards but for her it's Off that screen. dragon yeah yes is it is that the bedroom though i guess i haven't really paid too much attention i thought this was just like a separate room where he hung out but i, think I don't know chambers, no. because he i think this is just one there. room in his apartment but right, like, right i mean yeah like the king's chamber would be you know a, a mansion to us but that's where he likes to sit so he can admire his Lego set. Because right. what's because you you build it, but then you can also sit back and admire your hard work, right? Yeah, so this is just you know basic introductions. We get the baby. And uh then they all the kids get sent down to the dragon pit. And it was uh Vermax, I think, right? Vermax, yeah. Yeah, um that's um Lucera's what's his name? Uh, no isn't that Jace. J- Jace, Jace's dragon, right? Yeah, and he's because he's the he's the oldest and he's still kind of learning. Um, and this is like it's interesting. Like we literally get like some how to train your dragon, and uh, he it, they they've bonded, but not entirely at this point. I guess is is how they're kind of you know playing it. And I guess he could probably ride him. He's big enough, but he's still a little wild. But the um, the dragon handlers, or I don't know if they have an, I don't know if there's like a name for them, but they they seem to have a decent amount of control over them. The guy that's like helping him has some gnarly face burns. Um, yeah, so, you know, it, it's, clear mean... that, it's clear that they um, it's a dangerous job. <laughs> yeah, but you know he doesn't quite listen, but he gets to like just shout Drakari's for the first time. Probably it looks like, and you know feed the dragon and all that. And I like then, the uh, dynamic they set up with the kids here, um, and that Aegon is friendly with his half siblings, or rather. What is their relationship? Wait, no, they yeah. are ha- like un- nef- nephews. <laughs> yeah, they're half nephews. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's friendly with them, and Aemon is is clearly like the sullen one, the one who's the odd child out and doesn't yeah. get along with any of his siblings. And that kind of gets true. reflected later yeah. in the yard, where Aemon bumps his shoulder really hard against Jace's shoulder, and Aegon pats Lucerys on the back. It's just a completely unexpected dynamic because I thought they were going to be. It was going to be a very clear line between the two sides, but Aegon just seems very affable. Hey, all Aegon wants to do is jerk off exhibi- like an exhibitionist. <laughs> that was yeah. awesome. I think Aegon's like the big kid who's the who's like the lead bully, uh, and uh, and Jace and Luke sort of just in an orbit around him. It's more like a, like the school boss kind of. Type. Yeah, they just, they want his approval, so, like, any kind of, like, cruelty will, like, it's, like, it's still Aegon's, yeah, I feel like the the pink dread was kind of Aegon's idea, but then he passes it off on Jace and Luke, but, you know, like, they go along with it because they want his approval. Like, 100%, right? I think he was just lying to Allison, right? Oh, I've, yep. even, I mean, like, maybe, but even so, I don't. I don't trust him. He, he has every reason. Um, but I get the feeling that he's he's just a bully, and so like whoever he decides is going to be bullied that day 
is the kid that's going to be bullied that day. Because he's just as happy to kick the shit out of his little, like, nephew and, you know, beat him up mm-hmm. over yeah. in, in the yard and, like, wail on him. So I, I, I figure, you know, he, he's just, like, a mean little kid who gets to, you know, do what he wants. And his mother doesn't spoil him yeah. unless it's important. He's a rich, spoiled brat. Yeah. And- who 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 is older than every other kid? So he's bigger. So uh, he gets to boss them around. Um, yeah. And he yeah. doesn't really care if it if it's his little brother that he's bullying or if it's nephew that he's bullying. You can do it, or whatever. He's the he's the shadow leader. I like yeah, that he, his bedroom. He, he's such a teenager. His mattress is on the floor. It's like you're the crown prince. What are you doing? <laughs> and he literally he literally is a wanker. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Thing I cannot unsee that comment you put in the forum that he looks like Griffith. So thank you. For I'm sorry. That. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I, didn't I, know, I, I didn't even want to bring it up here because I didn't know how, how, how we you guys are. Yeah, listen, I I saw him as Griffith way as soon as we saw the still of him. I was like, holy crap! That and he looked like a Mike from Stranger Things, but albino. Um, <laughs> I thought he looked like Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, isn't, that, Timothy. isn't that what Michal said that he was? He was just like a uh, Finn Wolfhard with the, with the white wig. I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't unsee that. It, it's literally Finn Wolfhard with the with like really pale skin. Yeah, but they say, um, let's see. We're, oh no, that's there's a scene in between that. So we'll just cover that real quick. So then we get the Allison and uh, Helena scene, like we were talking about, with like the bit about the uh, you know close your eye and. Uh, Eamon whining about, you know, people bullying him. Uh, and then Allison talks to Viserys about that. And then she's, you know, does some complaining with Cole. And then goes and talks to Aegon, who is caught. I guess is, doesn't really seem, neither of them seem too uh, awkward about the fact that he's just standing out a window wanking it. Um, <laughs> whatever. He hops down and covers himself, so he has shame. But she, like, says nothing about it, so... Maybe it's not the first time. <laughs> she's seen it too many... Yeah, she's seen it too many times. It's like yeah. a... It's a typical mother call catching... And then like, she's um, buying very hard, as we talked to, into the, like, if you're not king, you're dead uh, narrative. And he's even like, wait, what? I mean, how old is he now at this point? 15? Yeah, he's something... 16 it. And so, like, my impression of him from the book was always kind of like... The fuck boy, but like not I, like I didn't view him as like the guy that wanted to start the civil war, and I mean part of that's because you know when you read the princess and the queen when they you know, take over they're like you're king and he's like no what are you talking about like he's not part of the plans you know they they have to kind of convince him to be king and so I think that they're not they're not going to do that they're doing the groundwork for that now right yeah so, they're, they're definitely making him a little bit more unlikable trying to give us I don't know if necessarily Joffrey vibes but like. Yeah, like he's kind of shit. He's not a sociopath like Joffrey. He's just a spoiled kid. Yeah, I mean, I mean like yeah. he, we're described him as like a very uh, lusty man later on. So I guess like the like little horn dog that he is right now as a teenager makes sense as well. Yeah, I just didn't expect that's how it would be introduced. Um, fair, fair. I, I don't know. It's I don't really care. I guess it's. It's just an interesting choice. All right, any more about this set with the dragons and the kids before we get to uh, Pentos? And we'll talk about the sparring scene in a little bit. But uh, I guess if we want to talk about Allison's motivations, this is a good time to talk about it or Clubfoot. Yeah, yeah, she's clearly got a lot going on here. Um, the way she kind of works for Ceres and she's got her agenda. And, I mean, she's made up her mind years ago about all of this, right? Right. It- Certainly feels that way. She's definitely like gone through this enough that she's drunk her own Kool Aid about like her beliefs on it and has not re examined them in a long time. Yeah, this is what I mean about stewing in her own paranoia for 10 years. Yeah, and it seems like Rhaenyra has not. The pitch of this series is a civil war within House Targaryen, right? Like, it's in our interest as the viewer to just like see this conflict as an effort. But also, like, I do find it interesting to, like, look for, like, de-escalation points in the story of, like, you know, those inflection points of this doesn't have to be this way, right? It kind of like the uh, what if if, like, 
Joffrey doesn't kill Ed, right? If he right. Ned, he, if he doesn't like have his head chopped off, he just sends him to the wall. Like, is right. there a de-escalation point that was able to happen, um, so, or something similar to that? Yeah, if, if like yeah. Jamie doesn't push Bran, I mean, we've talked about yeah. that before too, That's, right? Yeah. Like, could could this have been resolved another way? Um, yeah, right. And it's just like so, like, right? Like, I get that. Like, this is what the show is trying to push—a self fulfilling prophecy in that. But like, you know, to me, there's not been enough of like. Or, you know, like, yeah, for me, it's like last episode was Allison going zero to 60 because, you know, she got confirmation that Rhaenyra was sleeping around for her own pleasure. Uh, you know, and like, like, this is, this is the result of 10 years in that mindset. And, you know, it's like at that, this point, like, you know, like, this is what makes it less interesting for me because, you know, like, she's been like, Stewing in this for 10 years and she's pushing herself to the point where she's like having a mental breakdown talking to like Clubfoot, right? Oh, and... yeah. I don't know if I could say it's a mental breakdown. It's more, and no, I don't, I mean, she definitely, she's definitely frustrated with a lot of things that's not. Uh, basically, she behaves as a stereotypical medieval lady. Well, I don't know if it's a mental breakdown, but you'd say she's fixated. Like some people might say she's right. like almost hysterical, which I don't think is accurate. Either. I don't even know about fixated. But I think I think, I think she is. No, I I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, we'll get to it later. But like she, sure. ugh, yeah, no, I, don't know. I mean, but how Fear. can she not be? How can she not be fixated about stuff that's? I mean, this directly... this is her whole mission in life. I feel like, and um, I, like I said, I don't think it necessarily made sense before, but we're kind of here now, and, I, and I'm willing to give them some grace on the story, because I guess especially in this world, women have less agency, and you know, power power is the people that take it, right? So I guess that, that those are kind of the rules they live under. So I mean, here's I mean, here's everything that's laid out in the show. She's behaved exactly like what every single good mor moral medieval lady should do she married the she, she married the king look it's not that i object to this kind of character you know like the like serena joy type from the handmaid's tale it's just that the show this show did not sell me on that and i think part of the problem is that the, the time skip i guess because the, the the there's a, the i mean we we go from zero to 60 because there we literally did go from zero to 60 we went, went from we went 10 years without anything huh? We skipped ten years, right? Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's a way around that. I mean, if spending more time with these characters. Yeah, I think it just feels like they built something interesting with her in the first five episodes, and I think I would have liked to have seen more of like the the kind of innocent and. Uh, well, only one episode. I don't know. Also, we yeah. also one episode in which they're trying to cram a into lot like of the new stuff. episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So new, we'll yeah. see. That's, right? that's, that's part of it. Yeah, that's absolutely part of it. This this is kind of like a season 1.5 sort of situation so anyway we get um after this we get probably one of the, my favorite parts of this whole episode is uh Caraxes and Vagar out of nowhere uh putting on like an air show for <laughs> Lords of Pentos I guess um the prince and uh maybe some foreshadowing for stuff later but it was just, it was just a joy to watch this I think that they, they pulled it off really well them flying in the air and all that and I thought Oh, Damon looks like he's a good dad, and looks like he's a loving husband, and like this is working. <laughs> um, yeah. What do you make of his decision to? I mean, his desire to stay in Pintos because he's not, as Lena says later in the episode, he's not really happy there. He doesn't go out in the city or anything. Like, is it just that he's frustrated? Like, he can't go home and be who he wants to be, so he's kind of stuck here, living it up, like. Do you think he's wrong to consider the offer? No, I'm just curious about, like... Because I feel like, okay, he wants to stay in Pentos because it's fun. They're Like he says, they're feted and they're, and they're shown all this great hospitality. But it's also said later by his wife that he's not truly happy there. So it's like, what is the... Well, I think the one line, you know, the exchange between them that kind of says it all to me... Is she says like we, they're just using us, and he's like, "Yeah, isn't it great? Like someone finally wants to use me. Someone finally like wants 
my, me for my skills, you know, and whatever it's, it's transactional, but he's like, my brother, you know, doesn't want me around and well, there's nothing for me to do to use me in the way I want him to use me. Right. Yeah. Like he doesn't like, right. Cause like Viserys is, or he was, you know, one of like, or, you know, he was being used by the Tiger Targaryens, right? Like Alison had him marry the Royce woman, but he hated that, you know, like brother doesn't want him to go go to war in the Stepstones, but he does it anyway, right? That's not, like, or, you know, like, and also, you know, so, like, they're, the Pentoshi are giving him, like, an opportunity to go god mode on another, like, fleet of ships and get some of the old glory back, you know? Yeah, I guess my, my, my to clarify my question, is like, what is stopping him from going home if he wanted to? Is it because he is banished again? I like, uh, he can't be banished I, now, right? Because they're married, they got the kids. Like he seems in good standing. It's just there's no there's no deep there's nothing for him to do except hang out at his father in law's house, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, he he can't be with Rhaenyra because he's married again. She's married again. Although, how yeah. did the whole thing with his ex wife or his um, his dead wife, uh, her estate go? I mean, what's you know what's going on there? What happened? I guess he dropped Runestone. that matter. Runestone, yeah, that's what it is. Or there they, is a matter in the veil later. I isn't that is is the lore master here? So like, if so, there is a matter in the veil that like you know kind of like the coda to this story, like the burning of the Shire here. From what right? I remember, she she, she got, he got laughed out from the burning of the Shire. And right, like, I don't think he was actually inter off. interested in Runestone. He was just interested in telling the Royce cousin that just as a power move. Sure. Yeah. Well, no, in the books, he she, she pressed he pressed the claims, and and and, and the, the lady. He lost it. And they availed to her, to him to fuck off and never come back. I mean, he nice. needs some, he Gina. needs something. He needs a place to be, and he doesn't have a place to be, right? So, I, I mean, if it's Runestone, and then he could, you know, work try to work his way up to something better. Like I'm sure he would do that, but again, like you know, uh, what is it? High Tide is not his. Can I say something about uh, Lena? I don't think she, they did enough to give me any direction on, on what, her, what her character is. I wish they did. And again, she's one of, other than yeah. just a cool ass dragon rider. Yeah, and it's like hey, cool. She got she got Vagar. That's awesome. But yeah, they didn't is, really tell us how she got Vagar. Um, yeah, yeah. Neither but, to the books, really. No, no but either. she said that uh, she had Vagar when she was fifteen. Is she supposed to be? Younger than that at the wedding? Last episode? Yes, yeah. Oh, I didn't I didn't huh. Just thought about that. Yeah. Yeah, because I was like she would have she would have already had Vagar, right? Um no. Yeah, her maybe primary her, motivation her. is that she wants to go home. She can't go home because mm. her husband doesn't <laughs> won't move his ass to go home. So presumably that might be his motivation in the next episode. It's like, okay, I guess I will fulfill my wife's wish to go home and take our kids back home. Hmm. Raymond doesn't really strike me as being that respecting of her wishes. It's just that, like, he's ready. Or, or you know, like, they're, you know, like, he's, or she's dead. You know, he puts out the hit on Lenore to get Rhaenyra single. Oh, yeah, that's, I gotta, I gotta, you guys gotta remind me, I don't remember exactly what happened to Lainor in the books. I gotta uh, read that again. He gets oh, killed Carl. by Carl. Yeah, the Carl. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then Carl yeah, disappears. I thought, yeah, I almost thought they were gonna take out all three at once in this episode, just to, like, move it along. That's too much. That's to be too yeah. fast. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I, I mean, it was, it was already a bit much as was. Right, yeah, I mean, with, with Damon, I just, you know, he's kind of being a coward and, and hiding out, and her her death just kind of pulls him out of his reverie, and that's probably why he goes back. But he doesn't go back. Well, I mean, he once occupied Dragonstone, but going back according to Lena's wishes, wishes will be going to Driftmark. Right, but they're all gonna. I mean, yeah, but they're all gonna coalesce. I mean, we don't know the order of things, but it's just like all guess, the yeah. basically the, the blacks are gonna all coalesce, you know, yeah, in yeah, the next yeah. episode, and so he's just gonna bring them. He has to bring her bones back for the funeral, I guess. Cause... That too, right? Yeah, they'll meet up all there. Yeah, we we can ju let's just talk about all this pento stuff right now because I feel like we got kind of good energy going here. So, it, like they they talk about going back, and he I, I felt like he kind of 
had moments where he seemed genuinely caring and loving towards her, and then moments where he was completely distant and almost seemed like he didn't care. Um, they, you know, they talk I, about. Um, she talks about uh, hatching a dragon versus claiming one with their daughter, and they get like the whole emo Damon, you know, chat, and then of course, um, the birth and death and everything that was crazy as shit. Um, like, did you think? How are they portraying Damon here? I'm just like slow, slow rolling it here, trying to figure out what I'm thinking, honestly, because we just watched the episode, you know. I don't think um, Damon committed any kind of crime this episode, so that's a, that's in something new. And so I was waiting for something. Like I think, especially the moment close. with the birth. He was getting close. Yeah, right there. He was getting uh, close. I, I feel like maybe. No, I don't think he was going to. I think that's the oh. point. Is that oh. very clearly? They're saying, you know, the baby's not coming, and he's like, I can't do anymore. Well, hey, we can go to the knife. And we saw this in episode one. What was Viserys' choice? Now, Viserys was told something kind of different. Viserys was told, hey, they're both going to die. Let's cut them open. Um, but they give him this, this choice here of like, well, hey, we can try to get the kid out, but there's no guarantee we get the kid out, and she's for sure going to die. And you can see the look on his face. He, like, maybe considers it, but I really don't think he does so much. This and, then scene she's, the one and then she's off. Yeah, this know? seems the one that confused me. Because I don't, I don't understand what the motivations of any of these characters are. I, I yeah, guess is is uh, is he into this? Is he an asshole? Like, what are they pushing on us? It's it's yeah, really yeah. hard for me to tell. I it would have been she's... better, I think, for him to make a choice in that scene. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I thought he was about to say no way, and then she was just gone, and the, like, yeah. they never gave us that. No, so, how she it, snuck it's... out is is a mystery as well. That's true. <laughs> Pregnant like woman, five guys holding her down. <laughs> yeah, and like what. What was her? Did she overhear and assume that Damon was going to do as any of the series and just like, no? I think that's what we're supposed to hear. We're supposed to assume that or she, she just wants chat. She's, and, or she knows she's doomed anyways. And, just, and that, she that, said, well, yeah. I want to go out okay. as a dragon rider. So she was like, go. she went out and burned me. You know, um, I think the viewers are going to find that very confusing. Yeah. That was middle as fuck, though. Oh, it, it was. It was. It was so sad, though. A bit more context would be made that scene so much. Yeah, better. no, I was. Yeah, I was also waiting for Damon to say something, and I just, I mean, or I or fine. for Lena to think that Damon was going to decide either way. I couldn't read Matt Smith's acting in that scene. That's important. It's very strange. I I do have to agree on that point. Is that they kind of make him too distant towards the end of the episode. And according to Twitter, there are stills where he's hugging his daughters at the end when they're crying on the roof. And it's like, why did they take that out? <laughs> like, why did they, right? like, take out that... Hu that would have been way more humanizing, whereas now he just kind of... There's like a... There's like an absence of consistent choicing at the end. Like, him right. making choices. He's just reacting. He's not doing much. Right. And to talk about comparisons to Viserys, that would be an interesting comparison, because Viserys just stared at his Lego set for six months instead of actually connecting with his daughter. Yeah, let's rewrite the scene. He says, no, don't cut up in my wife. And then Lena's like, well, I'm dying anyway. And then he hugs his daughters and they look out and they cry together. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you know, for him to say no, don't cut me open, or don't like cut her open, that would be an interesting show of Damon's loyalty, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it really seemed like that's what he was doing. It seemed like he was about to be like, no, like, let's Let's just keep giving her Save. a chance to get the. He said, "What did he say?" He said, "You know, poor, you know, poor girl, or whatever." He said was like, "Ugh!" Like he basically was like, "Man, this sucks." Yeah, and uh, I don't know. They, they they just didn't give him another moment to breathe, and they yeah. the two of them obviously did not have enough time together on screen. I, yeah. I knew we weren't going to get that, which sucks, especially because the uh, the chemistry was there. The scenes that they were in were, were really good. Um, yeah, yeah. You know mm. what I think is going to happen. If I had to guess, because like their relationship, it, they they seem good together, but she also acknowledges that he, like she's not the wife that he wanted. I feel like we're gonna get the final episode. Renira is gonna go into labor with her like demon spawn Visenya baby, and they're like, we have to cut her open, my lord. And he's gonna say no, <laughs> and we're gonna have <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have someone finally, queen. yeah, definitively in episode say, uh, no, how about let's not cut up in the women. <laughs> I could see that maybe, like, they, that's a trajectory maybe, maybe where that's, <laughs> that's the trajectory that's where it's like, Basira said, form. yes, cut open my wife, Damon doesn't say anything when Lane is in labor because he's thinking about it, but then finally, somebody at the end says, no, don't do it. 
Right. Okay. Let's talk about uh, Raina because she has a brief scene with Lena about how oh, yeah, yeah. Daddy doesn't pay any attention to her because her dragon egg didn't hatch. So I guess he was teaching Bela Valyrian. Yeah, and I was like, oh, look at him. He's being a great dad. <laughs> right? Nope, gotta shoot that down. Uh, mm. they, they, can't, they can't let us have the good Damon this week. You know, um, that is, you know, that is interesting because, you know, it's him that goes into a blind rage when Luke gets killed by uh, fucking Amond. And, you know, he's the one who's, like, in a blind rage and it's just, like, a son for a son. Yes, it's the oh, whole, right. like, this is within the family, and then that's someone from outside the family attacking him. But at the same time, it's like, Luke isn't his son either, you know? I wonder if if we'll see him bond with the boys. I don't know, maybe he just doesn't know how to relate to Reyna because she doesn't have a dragon. Oh my god. <laughs> that's right. I'm sorry, I only, I only speak to dragon riders. <laughs> oh man. What else does he have? Stories about brothels or dragons? That's it. Maybe that's the that's the problem with his relationship with Rhea Royce as well. Yeah, if only he could have taken her to a dragon. No, I think what would have been cool is if they at least mentioned, like, maybe we see the courtship at the wedding. Like, I'm in my headcanon, like, he takes her for a ride. They find Vagar, you know what I mean? Like, maybe they 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 did that together. Um, yeah, when they were dragon riding together, anything. like, like maybe, like, I'm completely wrong in this, but like Matt, you know, like when, like, because it opens on, like, on Damon riding, and then it, the camera then shows us Vagar. It's like with like Damon looking at her. It's like it, like the way he looks at Vagar is just like hers is bigger than mine, and I'm into that. <laughs> he has bedroom eyes, 100. percent Right. Yeah. And and I guess actually this is a good point because they've set up his impotency or his performance anxiety is actually what it would be, I guess. Um, throughout the first five episodes, and now he's got two kids, and se and seems to not have those problems with her. So, right. The only, yeah, the only thing is that <laughs> the one person he does like want is is Rhaenyra, <laughs> and 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 Lena knows it. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Do you guys think that Vagar didn't want to burn Lena because she's his her writer, or is it that? Vagar is just senile and, and like hard of hearing, and it's he was tired. It's <laughs> like, what are you saying? Jo what? Jo what? Speak up! <laughs> oh, burn you! Yeah, I got it. I think he I was it. confused, and then it felt like he connected with her on some level, and then he was okay with it. I don't know. It, it I think he basically thing. tells her no a couple times. Like he's sort of like, I'm not doing that, and she's just like pleading with him until he does it. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm reading too much into that, but there's supposed to be a connection there. Yeah, that's what I read about it, too. Yeah, that, that's something I, I don't know how they would do it, but that would, that would be nice to actually kind of see more of that, um, you know, almost warg-like connection that I've always assumed that Targaryens have with... Um, oh, man, with if, we get just, if we just get one of them doing something like... I mean, Damon in episode two, sort of calls Caraxes out of nowhere, you know, like, Jedi style. Like, if we got something like that where someone kind of summons their dragon from far away, like, just a little bit, that'd be great. What if Lara Strong summons his rat army? I would prefer that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What was the, what was the animal? Fucking green seer shit. Or not animal, what was the bug that was on the... Was it like a fly? They had was bees, it? or wasps, maybe. Was it... Did you say beetle? Or a cockroach? I think was, yeah. I thought it was beetles or something like that, maybe. I'd have to go back and look at it, because it looked like... The, like you mean the thing that was pinned on their, yeah, on their, had, their coats, the, like cane. the thugs? He had it in a cane as well. Like, when the, yeah. the, the scene where they cut... Oh my god, that scene was rough. Where they cut out the guy's tongues. Yeah. Um, is, he, is he the real Lord Beesbury? Anyway. Lord Beesbury. Yep, okay. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to something that uh, I thought they did a really good job with. And we're backing up a little bit, but uh, to the training of the Lordlings in the yard with, uh, is Cole, is he the uh, Lord Commander yet here? No. no I don't think so. Not yet. Just, like, Harold Westerling is still around. He just hasn't, we haven't heard from him. Yeah. Because, I mean, like the Lord Commander doesn't necessarily like look any different. Um, they're all white cloaks. Anyway, 
So they, I think that they were definitely going for, uh, you know, episode one, Game of Thrones, the kids training in the yard at Winterfell. And they definitely got those vibes with, you know, Papa Viserys looking down. Oh, look, everyone's going to be such friends. And uh, Lionel will be like, yes, yes, my lord. And of course, we know that was, you know, the Stark kids, which is fine. And then Theon, and we know what's ha- what happens there. And so this kind of takes a dark turn. We've got, you know, uh, Rhaenyra's kids in black and red. And Allison's kids with the green, you know, very, you know, visual for the for the audience, and uh, it takes a dark turn <laughs> for sure. I, I mean, this is this is part of where I say I felt the episode was rushed in in certain scenes because we didn't get enough time with kind of this when I could have maybe used a couple more scenes of this. I thought it worked. I mean, I think it's a complicated bit of like relationship graphing for the characters because there's it's like it establishes Kristen Cole's relationship with Allison's kids and Harwin's relationship with with his own children which is like the open secret of the episode and the children's relationship with each other and then Harwin's relationship with Kristen like it does a lot for for how short of a, like how relatively short of a scene it is I I think I was more impressed with that I didn't necessarily read it as being rushed on any front yeah, it didn't feel rushed. No, I think the scene itself was fine. It's just it would be great to have more time with the kids. Yeah, it was a great scene. I just felt like I wish we could have gotten kind of more. Oh, we'll get more next episode. Well, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Is next episode uh, Driftmark? Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think this works? I mean, goading, um, goading Harwin, kind of everything that goes on there. I mean, there weren't even that many people in the yard, and now it's like, the secret's out! You're like, it wasn't before? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I like Cole showing his incel energy, taking it out on his ex's kids. You know, I also, uh, like, I don't... You know, it's just all about, like, just saying the quiet part out loud, so then, like, you know, he's just, like... It, it was, I think the main point was about being public and do that happening. Do you think Cole yeah. was setting this up from the beginning? Yeah, um, well, you know, I think, yeah, I mean, he just says, like, you know, like, I mean, it's just like, what what about this day makes Cole want to do that while well, the new baby was born, right? Uh, or maybe he's just always pushing and this, this happened to do it better. Right, he's um, always, uh, you know, like, right, you know, like, either that or, you know, like, his talk with Allison about, like, goodness and, like, just and propriety shall prevail. Right, but then, like, so, like, him thinking, yeah, like, maybe he was needling Harwin a little bit before, but now he's really, like, stepped it up a notch. Yeah, and he's way shown his colors here now. I mean, just how he acts in several and scenes. And he didn't even punch that, because he, he just wanted to provoke break bones, and it yeah. worked, right? I've got to say, I think it's odd that the insult that he pays to him like it, it, it's a pretty nasty one, and I, I feel like based off the way this world works, it should be totally okay that he beat the fuck out of him. Like, why is it an issue that Harwin beats him up? Because to oh, do so uh, would acknowledge the treason. No, it's he's paying him an imp- He's saying he slept with the the princess. Like this is this is pretty pretty heavy accusations here. I mean, yeah, because in, in this world, you would expect him to be like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, um, or what are you, you know, what are you insinuating? Like something, and he just goes straight to violence. So That's a good point. I, I guess, maybe, still, it, feel, it feels a little bit because, like, if he, he was being... get away with insinuating something that heavy so plainly. Right, and... but then you would say, you've challenged my honor, you, you know, whatever it is, you know, obviously I won't stand for this, yada, 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 and then maybe, you know, a confrontation comes, but just to just fisticuffs, like not, you know, oh, that's not, you know, that's not very knightly, you know, I don't know. I think that's how we're supposed to view it. I did think it was weird that they're like, he must be expelled from the, you know, the city guard, and you're like, and then we want him dead, and you know, I don't know. It's, yeah. I didn't know it was going to be that big of a, re- I, I was like, oh, okay, these guys are in the yard, and okay, they're going at it. I thought, well, that's it. And then they're like, oh no, this is like, this is it. Like, everyone realizes the secret now, and, you know, I'm like, what? I don't I think, know. Well, Kristen I think is still a member of the Kingsguard. No, I know. 
like, there was like I, five I, people there. I don't think <laughs> yeah. it's rather than like a single moment that blows everything up, or rather this is just sort of the, the cherry on the top in which things have gotten so ridiculous at this point, in which Harren Strong is not even trying to hide any of this in front of the king and the king's and just attacking random members of the king's guard. Yeah, and Li- and I mean Lionel makes that pretty clear when they have that argument. Rhaenyra, think, does, she, does Rhaenyra have a secret passage like from her yes. chamber down to theirs? Is that what that was? Yes. Yeah. The same That's thing as episode four. Um, yeah. So, you know, they've moved in right next door. And yeah, he uh, Lionel with his uh his honor is like he's outraged and I guess he's maybe mad at himself it took him this long to kind of deal with it. And you know, then he you know, obviously he's gonna quit, like I don't know. Um, it's just, it's interesting. Because what, oh yeah, because we get uh, Harwin and uh, Lionel are arguing, and then right after that, uh, Lenor comes back with his, you know, boy toy, and then you know, we, we get that, where he's like, right. well, I'm gonna go swashbuckling with the guys! And she's and like, not uh, only I order you to stay here. <laughs> not only Ooh. is Art Harwin and his father arguing, Rhaenyra overhears it, and she's just like, oh, this, like, you know, this lie I've been living isn't enough, right? Yeah, like, everyone like, knows, even the king. It's falling he, apart. Yeah. Which I mean, is like part of been saying this for years, right? Oh, yeah, no, she's, like, that, that's probably, like, what, no, that's what bleeds into it. She's just, like, you know, like, because, like, you know, like, she, t- you know, like, Viserys says that he commanded her years ago not to speak of this, and yeah you know, gives his horse genetics example, and, you know, like, she's, like... <laughs> and she's like, did you see the dicks going in on the horse, Viserys? <laughs> yeah, and then, like, you know, now, she, yeah, and, you know, now she's, you know, she's just been stewing in the, like, she'll kill my kids, she's getting away with the bastardy, see, isn't that proof, what else will she get away with? You know, this is yeah. just proving my point. And proving it, it sucks right. because... In this world, like these things, like not having proper heirs and all that, are obviously important. But you know, we right. see the the Lannister, you know, Baratheon kids in Game of Thrones. Um, a lot of it just feels like, as a woman, there's, you just can't get away with a lot of shit. As a man could, you know, it's just the world they're in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because so just... a prince, prince, you know, if she was prince, you know, Rhaegar or whatever, instead of you know, Princess Rhaenyra. Like, she could do almost all this same shit and be like, fuck around and find out, right? Right, that's kind of the point of why she has them to begin with, right? You have to give her some kind of, like, thing of, how can you be so stupid? Like, you know, yes, it's not fair, but, like, you know, like, if you were just a little smarter, if you just drank some damn moon tea, right? Or, you know, like... Well, I mean, is this partially lane or not? wanting to do his duty well, or not maybe not being able to do it right i mean it's like okay there's his orientation issue there's like you know okay like where's the uh medieval turkey baster right i mean yeah because they've got to produce theirs as quick as possible and once you have one you're like well keep going and now of right. course in the books it's it's different and you know, it's the not about Rhaenyra's arrogance. It's the proximity, it, right? It is about right, and it is about Rhaenyra's arrogance too. You know, she is. It is rather arrogant to, you know, do this for ten years. Because I know, but like, like the, you're reference. part of the royal family, aren't you going to be arrogant? Aren't you entitled to do whatever the fuck you I mean, want? Typically, like, man. Yes, but you know, when a noble lady normally, when a noble lady has a indiscretion like this, she goes away to the country for the entire right. time her pregnancy is visible and she gives it to a distant relative or the church right and a few years later she comes back with some you know there's some like serving child that's in the house that's you know a peasant and you know no one talks about it right right yeah i don't know like i said it's a lot easier for men in this world than it is for women i mean you know robert how many bastards did robert have um, 17 16 yeah. and even is. you know even in this world it wouldn't be that hard if he like you know they didn't have surrogacy but like let's say cersei didn't want to have kids and like he has a bastard like they could go on a trip Cer- you know cersei could you know she could be at dragonstone for a while suddenly she could come back with a kid it's like no one really knows there'd just be rumors right 
Um, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, also, you know, like if Cersei actually didn't want to have any kids, you know, like once she hits menopause, Robert would love to put her aside, right? Right. I've, there's only been like two characters who have this brazen in the entire game of the Ice and Fire world. It's Rhaenyra and it's Cersei. Right? Yeah. <laughs> even even Aegon the Fourth had to legitimize those bastards later on. Right. Oh, you mean in regard in regard to the in, in regard to Black the kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there there are a couple of kids that are rumored though. And then there's the ancestor of House Plum, right? Who was like, you know, yeah, like his. Oh yeah, his dad had a six foot dick because because the real father was actually Aegon the Fourth. I've yeah. lost but the thread because, of what we're talking about. <laughs> right, but this is like, yeah, but you know, like with like. I don't know. Like, Lenor is, in fact, a good sport about this, and he was the total cinnamon roll walking her up the stairs. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, he is, like, yeah, after ten years, he is chafing a bit, and yeah, he wants to, like, go back on campaign. But, yeah, I feel like uh, the, the, the two of them have accepted their role, accepted the future, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing for the realm, and it's just been, like, a ten-year campaign by Alicent to be like, fuck these two. Um... You know, I don't know. This is where I think the show is going to flip. You know, because you know that most people are going to, you know, not be heavy green supporters just if you go based on the, you know, the text. So I think they gave us a lot of that in the beginning, trying to make Allison more sympathetic. And this is where they're going to flip and be kind of like, well, look, Rhaenyra is just being mistreated. Um, you know, although we'll see what happens next episode. So, um, and this is another example of sort of what we've been talking about, but. We get the small council with uh, Grover Tully name drop. I, like I think like two or three times, right? Uh, which I thought was pretty nice. And they just change their names. Are they really? <laughs> are we really going to get Kermit and Oscar Tully? Oh, Bro, uh, if I get Tully. my wishes, if I get my wishes, we will <laughs> I want be to getting. <laughs> like Grover is like Grover's not pushing it yet, so we're like, oh yeah, Grover is okay. Like they thought I was going through. There's an Ismo in enough. there too. There is. Bro, there is. I, I can't <laughs> wait till we get Kermit, Look, my boy. Would kill for product placement in a Game of Thrones spinoff. You know, pay Sesame Street whatever the fuck they want. You know, <laughs> that's that's Bro, right. You you can go to go to um, build a bear and build yourself like a a Kermit with like a Tully you know tunic or something. Um, that'd be that'd be the kids would have be. no idea. The kids would have no idea. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so we get that, and then um, Rhaenyra offers uh, Jace and Helena marriage, and Viserys is like, finally, yes, this is perfect, someone's reasonable, you know, get this, let's, let's just put this behind us, it's, and of course, uh, Allison is not having that shit, and she's brazen about it, she's like, fuck off, and then, uh, well, oh, Rhaenyra has milk on her, oh no, she's so unseemly, because... Her, you know, she's pregnant and her boobs are leaking. And you're like, oh my gosh, um, yeah. And then Lionel tries to resign. So that was, you know, again, I I didn't think the whole like her shirt getting wet from breast milk was that big of a deal, and like everyone in the room was like <gasps> aghast. You know, I don't know. There's no lactation policy on the small council. I think it was just embarrassing for her, like undercutting yeah. her when she's doing this kind of grand speech where she's giving like a, a really like hefty olive branch to, to, to Allison. And then like Allison uses it essentially to, to mock her. Yeah. It's not like she cut a fart. I mean, geez. It, I don't know. It, it's not that heavy maybe, but it, it certainly felt like she was just using the fact that it was there as a way to, to get around the out. fact yeah, yeah, that 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 this like pretty pretty legit offer has been given to like start mending the relations. Yeah, it was pretty shitty. And and her reasoning for for being so against it, like she's she's against the targ marriage, but she's also just like fuck Rhaenyra. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess because yeah, your 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 kid would have to marry their nephew. Well, no, or, she's just no. insulted by the bastardy, right? I, I guess. At the same time, it does reek a little bit of her, like, not wanting to even accept that there is the possibility that Rhaenyra wouldn't, like, outright kill her kids. 
Right. This right. is why, this is what I'm going back to read the paranoia, you know? Right. It's just like, this is, it doesn't have to be this way. You could, you, this isn't, this is a real opportunity to bury the hatchet, but no. <laughs> why can't the characters just do what's right? <laughs> I know. A few scenes ago when she, when she talks to Aegon, she's like, you know, uh, if you don't get in line, they'll kill you. And he's like, well, I'll just be in line. Like, what the fuck? I don't, what's the problem? <laughs> like, right, like, I'll just fuck all day, you know? She's like, no, it doesn't, I you think can't. you guys are giving too much credit. <laughs> and that, that she was, that she was that she's going to follow for her promise and make sure everybody, right? And that, and, that, and then Aegon will be totally, Aegon Aemon will be totally fine after she takes the throne. No, I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I mean, I don't think so either. But I don't think uh, this is a bury the hatchet moment. I think this is a. Can we just shut up about this and just sort of temporarily have a truce moment? This but is not. You, but yeah. if if she accepts think, the marriage, so, like, what do you think happens out of that? You think you're still going to have Aegon trying to take the throne? I, I think the the, the assumption, I mean, the, the, the male claim is still there. It's, do you really? So I'm being serious when I ask this. Being, do you think he, she would go after Aegon and, and Aemon if she assumed the throne? I think, and there was put into a, I think she'll be put into a position where she will have to make the decision. I think whatever you want to say about Otto Hightower, and Otto Hightower is a, is a crook uh, who, who deliberately manipulated the situation to like this, but he is right in the sense that half the realm is, is assuming that Aegon should be the rightful heir. She, whether Rhaenyra herself personally wants to kill her brothers or not, Someone will push her to, 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 to into that. There will be people who push her to make that decision for, for her. That's just how that's just how it's going to work. I play too much Crusader Kings to not to realize that that's not going to happen. How it's going to work? <laughs> sure, amazing. Can I show the play the it character is... Rhaenyra Targaryen in Crusader Kings too? I murder Aegon and Aegon okay. Aemon tomorrow. <laughs> Can I say something? I like you know, like I don't disagree that some sort of confrontation is necessary or is going to happen, but I think what's changeable at this moment is the magnitude of such a confrontation. Yeah, sure. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that, that Allison isn't making bad decisions along the way either. Obviously, this, this, this both sides refusing to, 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 step, to, to, to sort of give, in, to give a little bit back to each other and just keep going at a rapid pace. But I feel like eventually there's a fundamental issue here. <laughs> That, 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 that is the result of a Viserys decision that ultimately maybe not a full-scale civil war that will completely destroy the realm and the Targaryen house that may come out of it, but some sort of bloodshed and bad things will come of it. And I'm not sure that Rhaenyra is so virtuous that she won't make the right decision for her and her No, clan. she's not. She's vindictive and petty and, you know, yeah. like her... <laughs> Like her, you know, like historical counterpart, the Empress Matilda, yeah. right? Yeah. And but, a liar. Like and that a liar. is Allison's understanding of her character is you lied and you hurt mm -hmm. me. Like you you tore my family apart for your own benefit. Why won't you who's to say you won't do that in the future? I can't trust you. Notorious yeah. liar. You mean because you mean send her yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of getting auto fired What do you mean by that? tearing her family apart? I mean, I don't know. Duke can come visit whenever he wants, right? Well, from Allison's perspective, like it's not Rhaenyra's fault that Otto is sent away. Like Rhaenyra did not. Well, actually, Rhaenyra did ask for that. <laughs> she did totally ask for that on her own right. initiative. But we don't know if Allison knows that. But I think, from an right. emotional standpoint, Allison can absolutely blame Rhaenyra from that because it was her actions that led to her father being dismissed. Like, if you want to say logically, can should she blame Rhaenyra? Of course not. Emotionally, can she? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, she can. Yeah, that's fair. I wish that last episode was, you know, like Emma Stone in The Favorite saying, I'm on my side. But that's not how it felt to me, and I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a good thing. I'm, 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 I'm just coming from the perspective that, that, this, that, 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 this is, that there is any way that Vernira and... Allison could just completely de-escalate and, and things will go happy and they'll, they'll show she can. It's not going to happen. <laughs> that's, not, that's not an outcome that's ever going to be possible. Uh, question, when is the next time skip, do you guys think? Because we do have stills that show us we get adult Eamon later. So well, I, we have to, I think we have we to have see to have that the next... Rhaenyra is kids by Damon, right? So, like... Next episode is Driftmark, so we get Eamon's eye, 
Lena's death. Lena is probably going to kick the bucket. Uh, you know, like the uh, so like Damon's going to be making moves on Rhaenyra. Vagar, well, here's the thing: like, there's Vagar. there's two episodes in a row. There's Driftmark, and then there's Lord of the Tides, and I I feel like it's any. I feel like next episode is going to be a lot of stuff uh, around Lena's funeral and the two families coming together on Dragonstone or or sorry Driftmark, and I think the episode after Lainor is probably going to bite it, and we'll get the wedding, and then we'll jump forward for episode nine because that's when Viserys right. has to die. Yeah, maybe. yeah they have to have. Rhaenyra's kids by Damon, be like nine years old. That's how old like little Aegon is. I mean, it's never a thing that I care that much about in Game of Thrones. It's definitely weird because Matt Smith is. It just looks the same. <laughs> he yeah. looks the same, <laughs> just with different hair. He looks length. the same, but he looks in yeah. all the same. So, like Matt Smith in episode one is supposed to be like twenty year old Matt Smith or twenties, right? Maybe mid late twenties, and then by the by, you know, the time the, the battle above the gods eye happens, he'll be like almost fifty. <laughs> so. <laughs> Matt Smith always looks like Matt Smith. Though. That's that, that's true to Matt Smith. Yeah. He still looks exactly like he how he was when he was the doctor. Targaryens <laughs> age like a fine wine. Um, <laughs> well, I am glad that he ditched the Draco Malfoy hair and is back to that's, Lord that's of the Rings good. knockoff. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get to see. Oh, is it? Um... Moon Dancer, or who's the, which is the dragon that um, Bela. Oh, Bela, Bela has right now? Moon Dancer. L- yeah, it's Moon Dancer. So we, did, we didn't the... see Moon Dancer, right? We haven't no. seen Moon Dancer. We yeah, haven't. Okay. We've just saw Vagar. They, well, they, they referenced that there were three dragons, but I'm like, we only saw two. Yes. So. Yes. The irony is that I believe that Reyna is the last dragon rider before Danny. Is that correct? As far uh, as we know. Does morning does she ever ride morning? Yes. Or yes, she does. I but... read it. Yeah. Morning I think m- morning so... lives for a while, right? Yeah, morning lives a, a pretty long while. She but she's always kind of small. Isn't but she always like a somewhat small dragon? She's rideable, but I isn't it that all the like the rideable dragons die during Aegon the Third's reign? That's what he's notorious for. Uh like because later in his reign, they try to hatch yeah. dragons. Yeah, Silverwing I mean, yeah. dies. Yeah, I think the last one that hatches is like Stone o- or is Oakenfist's baby with Bela, right? And then like that's the one that that's like the last one to hatch, but then he kills it because it's like tiny and like has serious defects, right. right? And then there's some old dragons. No, she definitely rides. Uh... She definitely rides morning. It doesn't really... I don't think it really says exactly how big morning gets, but... No, you know. And the story just ends there, so we don't really know what becomes yeah. of either of them. Yeah, but, they, they died somewhere in the next 20 years, you know? Yeah, but she might be the last one before Danny, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think that's legit. She's not the last right. dragon rider alive, though, is she? Because, like, Bela lives... About as long as she does. Bela lives a long time, actually. Yeah, but her dragon is dead. True, but she's still a dragon rider, to be fair. Well, sure. Are you really well, dra- is are you really a dragon, dragon rider? rider? <laughs> yeah. I mean, come I, I on. It, I'm, I'm of the opinion that as long as you rode a dragon at one point, like, bonded with that dragon and rode it, yeah, you're a dragon rider. You have the tattoo. <laughs> let's see. Let's let's get back on, back on the track here, because uh, we forgot... A key, a key moment. We sort of briefly touched on it earlier, but uh, Allison coming back home, and you know, Laris is like, "Oh, you know, honey, I'm home." I guess he was. Let's already... have our therapy session as usual. <laughs> They're just like, uh, you know, sipping tea, and uh, he's like, "Oh, you're bringing me the hot goss today." I don't know what happened, um, which I found interesting. He just sort of chills there, uh, and then they have their conversation, and then we get like torture master. <laughs> Um, Larry's uh, happened very quickly, and then I, I immediately knew where that was probably going. Right, I, you guys probably saw that too. Um, Harwin, you know, begs to take his son, or um, not Harwin. Uh, Lionel begs to take Harwin back to Heron Hall so he can get him set up. You know, because he's like he's my heir. And yep, I like the the how it shows to 
Lionel's character, that he's a man that really does stick to his principles, and he feels compromised here at this point. Yeah. So he's like, I can't be your hand. Like, you, the reason you made me your hand is that, like, you saw in me the, the what I hold to, like, as a man. And so I think he, he his, like, struggling with it is really it's compelling. I, I really enjoy it. I really like the performance from him. So, you know, sad to see him go. Yep. Untainted by self-interest. Like maybe the one character in the entire show. Yeah, and I do like Allison's line that at least my father would be partial to me. Because that does demonstrate how isolated she feels. I don't, you know, again, I don't feel it is warranted, but whatever. I like that she, you know, I like that she says that, and you know, I like how Clubfoot just takes it upon himself. Allison right. is the newest Sami. No, Katie, she's not just showing up just to make a sad face. That's that's a different show. <laughs> oh, that's 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 a throwback. Um, do we read this as weakness or as wisdom on Viserys' part when he doesn't let him resign? I think it's wisdom. I mean, I think it is because this is he's right. Like I can yeah. trust your counsel, all that. But at the same time, our, uh, Lionel's right too. Like right. I, I, think I for... should leave. Yeah, but okay, I think Viserys is in the same position that Tywin is Read the Twins test. You know, he can't acknowledge it, so he can't let Lionel resign. Which is right. you know, the exact reason Lionel is resigning, right? So right. the like the then compromise. Because like, he straight up says he straight up says we'll explain how you're compromised as if he doesn't know. <laughs> right. Lionel is okay, like I maybe Lionel could have suggested a replacement you know or like call lord corliss back he'll be like you know like he's like the in he's the father-in-law to your heir you know yes it's right. the appearance of self-interest but we crossed that bridge 10 years ago i will stay long enough to train my replacement and right <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i'll say this um I, I mean like in the end they do come to what feels like a compromise that feels legit, though. Like, yeah. hey, send your son. Having him like be set up back at Heron Hall, he's gonna rule it eventually when you die. That makes sense. But come back to beer and serve me as the able hand you are. You know. Yeah, and time away is also a bit of a punishment for you know. I, mean? I think it sort of satisfies Lionel's honor. Like, I'm I'm sort of self banishing myself for a little bit, and I'll be back. Um, Right, and I'm removing yeah. the actual problem, which is my son. Yes, yeah, and he's you know because he should have done it a lot sooner. Yep. Oh, we got a Jasper Wild uh, sighting in this chapter. Yep. chapter. Sitting left of Rhaenyra. In this some chapter, guy, yeah. just some guy sitting ne next to Rhaenyra right now. Yeah, for now, but hey, he'll be someone eventually. I, I don't know what he is in the books. I don't know what he's going to be in the show. <laughs> Katie, I saw the steal you put in the chat. Yeah, that would have been nice to see Damon hugging his daughter so well. Maybe next episode. Damon's the bad boy of King's Landing. He can't hug his daughters. Oh. All right, back to the episode. So there's <laughs> Allison's therapy session with Clubfoot. And so now that Lionel and Harwin are back at Heron Hall, Clubfoot has his agents set fire to the place. Yeah, so this is this is one way that uh, they answer the 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 story of Heron Hall. Um, you know, is this canon, quote unquote? I mean, I don't know. This is this was as likely as just about anything else, I guess, right? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like as far as the book goes, I don't feel like Damon would feel particularly threatened by Rhaenyra having a lover. I feel like he'd be confident enough to seduce her by himself. Uh. And Viserys strikes me as too feeble to, you know, actually put up a hit on someone. And also, if he wanted Lionel, or, I mean, like, in the book, I don't think he insists that Lionel stay on. But, but I do find it interesting when, uh, when Allison comes back and says, is it done? Are they dead? You know? Uh, which I don't even know if news would have gotten there yet, or I don't know. But then she, she kind of feigns, like, oh, this isn't what I really wanted. Oh, 
I didn't ask you to kill them, you know. I mean, from the look on her face, I believe that. No, I but think she, she, she I don't know, though. No, she I seemed to have the. Imp- I think she knew. I think she knew that he was going to do something because it seemed like she had the information before. You know, it was really information. So, because she was like, "Did you do it? Is it done?" Like, clearly, they had discussed doing something. Right? Whatever they discussed wasn't like Laris murdering her father and, and, and brother. Or maybe it was just Harwin. I don't know. I think it's just maneuvering to get Otto Hotham to to be Yeah, <laughs> I don't think she yeah. understood the implication. I think. That, do you think is, was Larry, Do you think Larius was trying to kill Harwin as well? I mean, he you know he has yes, him, him obviously down, right. So yeah, he Laris wants, is, yeah because now he's he uh, is now the, the, he's in the driver's the, seat. Yeah. yeah, he's now the Lord of Lord, Lord of Hanover. Strong work, Larry. Strong work. So then, uh, Rhaenyra moves to Dragonstone. She's like, "I'm taking my ball and going home." And we see Viserys with the rats on the mantle and you know yeah i like that they do try to explain why she didn't go to dragonstone before because yeah. you know she was worried that you know like without her advocating for herself at court that alicent would just get her way about everything which is probably true which could knowing knowing viserys is viserys you know that's there's probably truth to that also it looks like I mean, she's gonna be proven right in that, like, certain coup. person's coming back. And yes, the coup. Alright, so anything else? Uh, anything you guys want to talk about the fire, or uh, n- next week's episodes, or characters that maybe we'll hopefully get some more time with? I'm hoping for um, some more Kingsguard to start showing up. I want right. uh, Sir Eric and Sir Eric, and you know, I, I, well, I don't yeah, want them to do been... like like Game of Thrones did, where like eventually the King's Guard were just dudes with helmets on, and you have no idea who any of them were anymore. I um, mean, that's kind of because it's easier right now. Yeah. yeah, it's literally just been two. You of see them one or two of them. Well, well, we know two of them, and that's it. Of the well, three technically. Ryan Redwine, and he died. So then Harold Westwood right. got another one, and that was Kristen Cole. But Who's the one that uh, that sneaks out of King's Landing when the dance begins? Oh, uh, it's not Royce, is it? No, I don't remember. Is it like a Darklin or does Stefan Darklin? Maybe, maybe that sounds. Yeah, he he's the one that's sort of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a coup, and then just sort of like they can't find him. Suddenly, <laughs> he's smart this enough. To... I find to be the weakness of these books. I, mean, I I I I hear these names, and I know they what they sort of did in the books. They have no characters to me. I know the bro- the two brothers sort of killed each other, but that's great. Okay, chose the the, the horrors of the civil war. I, they have no character in the books, and I don't know if they yeah. have room to fit in all these random characters. They need to cut some of these people and need to combine these characters. I don't know. I mean, they yeah, probably I don't will. feel like yeah. it's a great injustice that the King's Guard isn't fully fleshed out. But yeah, if we wanted to have the whole shtick of the twins, maybe they could have just had them in the background li- before. There's like 20 of these people. We're going to be getting some of these people that we're, are actually going to get some time. And like, I barely remember them from the books at all, anyway, but, right? So, like, they, it they, is, are, they are going to get some more. Right. Uh, I mean, it is still play. 10 years till the coup. So, you know, there can be more turnover in the King's Guard before then. Uh, there's going to be. They, I think they go through like is a good college. Where are we at now? Uh, when does the dance start? Like twenty nine? Yeah, twenty nine. One twenty nine AC. So this is this is probably so we're like at like one twenty right around there. Yep. So Stefan we was jump. the one that escaped. Yeah. So we got to jump ahead. Oh yeah. Huh. I mean, like Jace has to be like an adult. We're. Or like a young, yeah. Jace has to be like a young adult, capable of like flying to Winterfell and getting right. married. Well, and there. and Luke has to be has to be big enough to go to yeah, to go to the Baratheons and like present a uh, enough of a challenge right. that it doesn't seem stupid when he well it'll seem stupid, but like you know enough that he seems threatening when they when they go at it. So yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So uh, next episode, next episode is called Driftmark. So, obviously, Damon's going to be looking for a new lady. And someone's going to lose an eye. 
and uh, maybe you know gain a dragon and all that. Um, a, lot, a lot's going to happen. So looks like we're going to get the scene from the the first trailer where <laughs> apparently Allison, instead of just suggesting that uh, Jace get his eye cut out, she's going to go for the knife and try to do it herself. That's what it looks like. Oh, oh yeah. Because hmm. she looked real unhinged when I saw that in the trailer. I can get behind yeah, that change. That's that'll more be, dramatic. <laughs> that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. Yep. Alright, well, I look forward to it, and we will see what happens. Alright. Well, thank you guys for joining me, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye bye bye. Well, yeah, I guess by that metric, Aegon the Third is also a dragon rider. Poor Aegon the Third, man. Yeah. Just want to yeah. give him a hug. Let's not talk about him too much yet. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking forward to them building him as like the biggest mama's boy ever. It's gonna be which real would sad. explain how much he hates dragons. <laughs> I would. Oh, it's I gonna just, suck. I think that might legit like be the end of the the Dance of the Dragons series. Like, who knows if they'll if House of the Dragon will become an anthology? But if they're when they end the Dance of the Dragons, I feel like the last episode is gonna be like lock the dragons up. They ate my mother. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see dragons! Uh, <laughs> yeah. Him in the hood and uh, hand, my boy. When that becomes...